Oh my. Good evening. Can everyone hear me? Okay, yes, I can hear you now. All right. So Okay. And it is exactly seven oh four on Wednesday, August twenty fourth, two thousand sixteen, as we go into episode four of Contracting Chatter, which is the LTNA's group. I'm sorry, I was turning on my camera so you can see me as well as hear me. Oh my, Good evening, I didn't everyone. know we were seeing one another. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> so as I said, this is LTNA's group monthly training series where we bring you a touch of information on government contracting so that we can help you build successful, sustainable contracting businesses. Just to take care of a little administrative items, we have a contracting chatter group on Facebook, which can be found at www.facebook.com backslash groups backslash contracting chatter. You can join us in that group where you can post your questions and just join in our contracting conversation. We also you know, drop little tidbits of information as we come across them for your use. So tonight's topic is growing grit for government contracting. And our guest on this evening is Miss Stephanie Burroughs. She is the CEO of Stephanie Speaker. Miss Burroughs is, oh, excuse me, she's recently been awarded her doctorate's degree, so let me change the title. Dr. Burroughs is a dynamic, inspirational speaker, workshop presenter, and government procurement strategist for minority, women, small, and veteran-owned businesses. Dr. Burroughs is the creator of the Big Contract Boot Camp, which is a digital training program and author of her book, Dating Your Business Prospects, Practical Strategies for Successful Business Matchmaker Meetings. She has more than 30 years of experience navigating approximately 2,000 small business owners through government, public, and corporate procurement and supplier diversity programs. Dr. Burroughs has created more than 200 training programs seminars, webinars, expos, and matchmakers, which provide a business owner the opportunity to effectively market, connect, and build relationships, which is key, with representatives from public agencies, local, county, state, and federal government and corporations. She is known for guiding small business owners through transforming their fear and frustration into clarity and confidence. Dr. Burroughs' inspirational and common sense approach fuels audiences to grow their grit factor for their personal and professional lives. Dr. Burroughs has, has received several awards and honors and has been featured on cable news networks, radio, print, media, and podcast. I welcome Dr. Burroughs to the Contracting Chatter. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good evening, everyone. I did not know we were going to be on camera, so no, I am not all fixed up pretty and cute. Um, I'm in work mode, but I'm happy to have on uh, an, a, a shirt that's quite appropriate. Let me see if I can show you. I've got this this thing in the way here. Yeah, there we go. See, women entrepreneurs rock. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been wearing it proudly all day today. I, I, I love this shirt. I got this when I spoke at a, a Women Entrepreneurs Rock program last year. So I love this shirt. It gets a lot of attention. People pay attention. And women walk by and shake their heads. And so, yes, yes. So it's exciting. Listen, everyone. Thank you, first and foremost. I got to thank Luciana for doing all that she's doing to pull this together. We've had different iterations of this contracting chatter, but um, she has a vision, like I hope you do too, 
for your business. And she has not only the vision, but she is enacting the vision. She is making it happen and not making excuses. So I always say to my business owners, you can't make money and excuses at the same time. And Luciana is definitely not making any excuses. What she has planned out, and she is awesome when it comes to planning and structure, and all of that comes from her background uh, in compliance, especially for federal government. So when I see what she's doing and she's out here just getting it, getting it done, it really warms my heart because it says to me, I'm not wrong for saying what I say to my business owners about growing grit because I know one thing about Ms. Luciana Turner. She has the grit factor. So for those of you who are wondering what I'm talking about when I say the grit factor, I'm talking about, you know, how the government has an acronym for everything just about. Well, I have my own acronym. GRIT in my acronym is being grounded, immovable. That means no matter what's coming at you, no matter what's being thrown at you, no matter how difficult and challenging things are, especially in your businesses, especially when you're going after government contracts, and I don't care if that's at the local level, the state level, um, county level, or federal government, or public agencies, it takes GRIT. It takes being grounded and not allowing yourself to be moved and shaken and no giving up and no quitting because there's no such thing as success for quitters. So you've got to stick it out. You have got to find that, that, that perseverance, that fortitude, um, the courage, the resilience, the resolve that's within you. And we all have it. Some people say, do we all have grit? I believe we do because I don't think we would all be here if we didn't. But when it comes to the government contracting side, you will encounter things like never before. And if you're already in this business, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Every day there'll be something new that you haven't encountered. And even if you've been at it for a long time, there's always another surprise waiting for you around the corner. Without a doubt, it takes grit for us to succeed in everything that we do, especially when we're working in government contracting. And in addition to that, I'm talking about being resilient. So when things aren't going your way or when you feel like you've been knocked down, resilient people get back up and go forward quickly. And what determines part of the, the determination for success is how quickly you get back up. You don't worry about the little things, and they may not appear to be little things to some of you, but they are. I can tell you that. Everything is just small stuff. Get over it. Move forward. Let's get it done. So let's get on. I'm going to move into some other things quickly, but I want to also just finish off grit. Grounded, resilient, intentional. You need to be intentional about everything you do, but when you're working in with the government, you can't be willy-nilly. I want you to just think about this for a minute. There's two sides to government you can think about, and I'm going to be focusing on federal government specifically because it's nationwide. It's international, okay? And states, it's a little different in every single date. They have state. They have their own process, and I work with business owners on those different processes, and it does take some work that has to be done to understand what they do. But we'll talk about that in my, uh, uh, when I get into one, this, one of the uh, six topics that I speak on and that I have a, my boot camp is all about. So being resi grounded, being resilient, you're just getting back up. You're not allowing anything to stop you. You know, when I talk about growing through the grind, you are going to grind in government contracting. Yes, you will. It's going to be not so much fun at certain points in time, but guess what? In anything that you do, in any business that you have, in any marketplace that you're in, there comes a point where you run into that whole grind business, and the process focuses you on growth. You may not think about it at that time, but when you get through it, you have grown and you are no longer the same. So we're talking about being grounded, resilient, intentional. You need to be intentional about who your marketplace is, who you're going after business with, who buys what you sell. I'll give you a little bit more on that in a moment. You need to be intentional about how you're going to grow your business, the purpose for what you're, why you have this business, what's the purpose of that business. You need to be intentional about how you're setting up your systems and everything that it takes for you to have a successful business. The groundwork has to be laid first. You must stay focused on that. People who are going willy-nilly are not going to make it. 
there's, there's no doubt about it. You have to be intentional and you have to sit down and plan. I know Luciana is awesome when it comes to doing the planning. See, if you're not great at something, you find people that are. I have someone that I'm going to be working with very shortly. We're working out the paperwork right now. And they're going to be taking over some pieces that I just, I know it, but they're experts at it. And so I'm handing it over. And I know as a small business owner, oftentimes that's the biggest challenge for you is to let go of things. But if you don't let go, you won't grow. Did you hear me? If you don't let go, you won't grow. And you all can just say that with me right now. If I don't let go, I won't grow. So it's really important that we begin to just allow ourselves to work in our own genius and allow other people to work in, our, in their genius on our behalf. And if you're wondering about, oh, but I'm really pretty new or I've been out here a bit of time and I've had some contracts, but I'm not great at this and I don't know how I'm going to pay for it. Let me tell you something. There are so many different ways that you can make it happen. And I know from experience, from over 30 years of helping many other people, having a business of my own for all of that time and Making it happen, getting it done, working things out, collaborating with others. There's always a will. But there's always a way when you have the will. And finally, um, so we've got grounded, resilient, and intentional. And I talk a whole lot more on this when I do my Growing Your Grit Factor speeches that are just on that. There's a lot that goes into this, because I'm going to go just quickly through some things. But then there's the transformation that takes place. Remember, the G is for grounded, the R is for resilience, the I is for intentional, being that at all times in everything you do. And then the T is for transformation, because it's going to happen if you stick to this, if you really work yourself through the process. I'll tell you something. Um, when I was a director of procurement programs for the New Jersey Small Business Development Centers, I had an assistant who one day, I don't know what happened, but she walked in my office and said to me, Stephanie, you are intentional about everything. And it blew my mind, because I didn't know she had peeped that in me. <laughs> I knew that. I didn't know she saw that, and she did. And I said, well, how do you live a life without intention? So we're going to move on. Much of the work that I've done with clients and training participants has focused in six specific areas. And this is what I decided to do my big contract boot camp all about. It's a digital tr um, training program. And that is purpose, planning, process, preparation, paperwork, and promotion. Now, under those six headings, there are 24 topics, subtopics, or modules. Can you imagine? This is just basic stuff, but it's basics that never, ever get old. Because you could be in business 10 years, but at some point in time, you're going to need a renewal. And in the process of that, you're looking over all of these things to see that you've covered all of it and that you have changed because the marketplace has changed, because technology has changed, because systems have changed, because there are new strategies out there. So you're going to always go back to the basics no matter what. If you've got sound basics, they're easy for you to go back to and tweak in order to be in alignment with what's taking place in that day and time. So I remember when we had the big, uh, you know, some people say, what did they call it? I call it the depression, 2007, 8, 9. Some are still in that depression. Don't get it twisted. So many companies went out of business, so many lost so many contracts, and some were too focused in one specific area of their contracts in, in terms of just dealing with one particular organization in government and having the contract just basically cut in half or even less or more than half rather and they were hurting so badly and I said well who else is in that location that can use your services they hadn't even thought about that or who else buys in the Fed who buys what you sell? Have you looked? See, they got so comfortable in this one space because they kept getting work year after year. And they didn't think to look elsewhere. So you have to diversify. And I'll tell you something else. If you think you're going to do all of your business with the feds, think again. 
it's not something you want to put all your eggs in one basket. And I'll say that for anything. If you're doing all your work for a state government in one particular contract and specifically, and you're winning each time it comes out, I, let, let me tell you something. You want to make sure you have diversified. I saw somebody grow strategically, and they blew up in this particular business they had, a manufacturing company. Blew up, hired about 100 employees, doing really great. And they missed the RFP when it came back out for recompete. Can you believe that? Oh, my gosh. They missed it. And then they wanted to argue, fuss, and fight, but it was too late. <laughs> and they lost like 75% of the business, their business, because all their eggs or the majority of their eggs were in that one basket. Look at all those people that had to be laid off. You don't want that to happen to you. So let's just walk real quickly through, and I doubt that um, we're going to get through all 24 modules. No way and we'll know how because that's why there's a digital training for that. But what I want to do is just touch on some terminology of what's, what you'll see in that because it's something that all of us need to do. And first and foremost is understand our why, which is our purpose. And I really focus on that because what's the purpose of you doing what you're doing and what's the purpose of you wanting to go after government contracts? Is it the money? What does that mean to you? What's the revenue that you want to drive in, in, in your business. How much are you looking to profit? How much are you looking for at net profit? And what is the purpose behind all of that? Is this a legacy business or is it a lifestyle business? Are you going to have how many companies how many employees have you envisioned and put in your business plan over the next five years? And what is it going to cost? What is the stabilization number that you need and to know that you are earning what you need to earn to cover not only all of your costs, but also to derive the net profit that you have identified you want to walk away with? And what is it going to cost you to live the lifestyle that you live? So you got to look at all of your numbers and make sure that you have somebody well-versed in that. Like I said, get the people who are great in what they do to work on your behalf. That's your team. And it doesn't mean all of the time that you're hiring them as an employee. They can be consultants. They can be coaches. They can, whatever. I'm a navigator. You want those people as a part of your team. You're not working. They're not employees. Not working with you every single day. You may be working with people who do certain things for you, bookkeepers that are uh, freelancers or they're virtual. You may have a virtual assistant. As you build, of course, you will be bringing on employees, and you will have some that you need for specific things. But I want you to keep this in mind. There are so many different ways to bring in the help that you need. So when I talk about purpose, you know, uh, the 2014 numbers were $91.7 billion out of over $400 billion in spend, and that 91.7 went to small businesses. So I know the 15 numbers are out. I have to look them up. I haven't had a chance to do that, but you can look it up too. And that's another thing. Be willing to do the work. You're going to have to do the work. It's just no getting around that. And, you know, I've had people come to me and say, well, can't you do this? No. How can you run a business and not know how, what's, what's the underpinnings, N not know how you're going to be doing business with these federal government entities? Look. When you're small, minority, women, veteran, business owner, until you're like a Pepsi Cola that everybody knows the brand name, but you don't even know who the president is, <laughs> you got people that you know that work there, right? But you don't know who's heading this thing up because you've grown that large. Until you're big, even mid sized companies, business owners are the brand. You're the face of your company. So when you go out to network, to sit in matchmaker meetings or industry days with these people that are responsible for the procurement process, you're the one they're talking to, or if you're at a point where you have business development representatives going out on your behalf, they'll get to know them as well. But they always want to know who that business owner is because you're going to be involved. So get ready to do the work. And I'm, what I'm talking about now is the work. So deciding the purpose, the money, going through that process, understanding what the opportunities are for you. Is it a growth process that you want to go to? Do you want to grow the business? Are you already doing business with um, uh, 
other government entities, so you've gotten some experience, you understand the paperwork, you won't run, hide, and cry about the amount of paperwork that you have to do, and you will have people that you'll need to have help you through some of that paperwork who are more skilled and knowledgeable in specific areas of the paperwork that needs to be done. But you still are in the process. You don't get to run from the process because you're the one with all of the information. You're the one with all of the knowledge. Moving forward, planning. Oh, my gosh. Now, this is a big one Whew, because it all starts with the planning. Research. My goodness, my goodness. I had someone I was working with recently, and we talked about their target market. And I spend a lot of time, too much time, talking to businesses about and asking the question, who are you targeting? Federal government is humongous. Who are you targeting? Have you done the work? Have you researched yet. There's an A to Z listing of every single gov federal government agency, department, division, whatever, online with live links. And I have shared with people, go get yourself some interns, tell them specifically what you're looking for, and have them go through those links and look at what the mission is and the purpose of that particular organization, and if it's possible for them to go and take a look to see if they have forecasts or whether or not they do the buy them, they purchase on their own or they're purchasing through another organization, because some that are really, really small will do that. Don't know what just happened here. <laughs> is that your? This is you. Okay. So I just wanted you to know that doing the research is number one. You need to understand how you're going to do business with the feds, who buys what you sell, how, they sell, how they're selling, what are the different programs that are out there. People run to me, they want to get certified for this, that, and the other, and half of it's not even relevant to the particular agency that they're talking about. I'm like, do you know who you're buying from? Go into their websites, do the research, and you can never – be at this for so long that you're not going back periodically to catch up. Follow them. Federal government is online. I love it. I love that they're online. So if you are someone that shine away and said, no, I'm never online, I'm not on social media, I don't do this, that, any other, well, then you're missing out. Because you know what? Not only are they going to, you think they're just going to look at your website? Websites are static. You put the information up, that's like your phone book. They're going to go looking to see whether or not you have any opinions, if you're doing, saying anything of note, what is it that you're doing, um, and they're looking on social media. You're, I, look, I know one thing, I was following somebody on social media, one of the agencies, and I was like so shocked when I saw them follow me back. What? That taught me a lesson. So therefore, understand that this is, this whole social network and social meeting is not just about being social. It's about promoting your business, who you are, what you do, what goods, what products and services are you selling, and how you're going about doing that, and what are you saying about your marketplace. And, you know, you go into my Facebook on my page, my business page, you're going to see me talking about different things that are happening in the federal government. So do the research. Research might be you getting on some webinars. I was just on a webinar today. I needed to go and find out if anything had changed in liens and bonding. So I got on the web webinar, Women Impacting Public Policy. And it's done by, it actually it was Give Me Five. So it's a combination of Amex, American Express Open, and Women Impacting Public Policy. And my dear friend, Ellen Nalen, who I've known for decades, who is awesome, when it comes to bond, helping uh, a surety bonding and helping others and teaching and training and also helping them to acquire surety bonds. She was being interviewed. It was so phenomenal to hear because there was some information that I hadn't kept up with and I learned something new. Are you reading information that has to do with federal contracting? There's so many different places. I mean, good grief if you just Google. I listen to and sometimes I listen, sometimes I just read Federal News Network information. Now, even though a lot of that is for the employees, guess what? There's so much great information in there 
for business owners because if you hear about this, you start thinking, how can I take advantage of that? Look, I almost blew a gasket when I read about, um, look, D, well, not the one with DLD awarding more than half of its contract spending without competitive bids. Mm, ouch, that's on my Facebook. Yeah, that, that was a slap in the face. But there was one that had to do with, you know, GSA, General Services Administration. Are you familiar with that? It's one of the vehicles in which company, uh, other agencies and departments and divisions are purchasing. So they're not necessarily doing it on their own. They're buying it off of the GSA contract, General Services Administration. Well, guess what? They've been for years trying to get everybody to buy those things that are off the, the shelf, so to speak, through them saving departments money. Now that government is truly, really shrinking, it is more imperative than ever that they start buying through GSA, GSA those types of products that are what we call off the shelf. 45,000 computers being bought through reverse auction for the federal government. GSA, yeah, I just saw that today. I thought I had it in, that I printed it out. Um, but I get this because I didn't stop and turn away because I saw Federal News Radio, um, most of this information was for employees. Some people will do that, and I see this happening all the time. You'll look at something and say, oh, that's not for me. Oh, you need to think differently. This is all part of your research. I thought differently. I said, there's got to be something in here of great value, and I am coming across so much value. So if, if I were going to, uh, when I read some of the things that are going on in here, I would be thinking, like, now, how is there a way for me as a business owner to get into the procurement cycle of this thing that they're talking about? Like, for instance, the ch challenges that are going on right now with cybersecurity. Huge, huge, uh, what did I say? NASA's act of desperation demonstrates continued cyber deficiencies. One of their main networks used by almost every employee and contractor and managed by Hewlett Packard Enterprises in such bad shape, the agency's chief information officer could no longer accept the risk and let the cyber, and, they, and let the cybersecurity authorization expire. Wow. Now, there's a whole lot more to it. That's just the opening paragraph. I, I would have to open this up to see the rest of it. But what I'm saying to you is I would be reading that IT people to see what else they have to say, what's coming down the pipe, what's going to change. This is research. But there's so much more to the research. Oh, my God, there's so much more to the research. Uh, um, Stephanie, I just wanted to jump in here and ask you a quick question. Mm-hmm. As, you know, you've been in the game for a very long time, 30 years, I believe. You have 30 years. More. What is the greatest <laughs> change in government contracting that you've seen? And how do you think small businesses are not taking advantage of that change? Technology. The embracing of technology. There are so many... I mean, if you look at the 8A program and, you're, and those that are uh, 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 technology companies, they're tearing it up. There's so much, there, there is work there for them. But if you're a small, tiny little firm, you need to be thinking about either teaming, subcontracting, or collaborating with others and maybe even joint venturing and bringing all of your experiences together because this is really critical today. The contracts are not small, especially not in IT. They're big. And maybe you want to do the mentor-protege program and have another company that's larger that is your mentor that can work with you. But technology, to me, is the biggest thing. I mean, it's so much, it's changing so quickly and, and, and it's become so necessary. And unfortunately, many small business owners are not technologically savvy. Oh. For you to even be able to adequately, I mean, come on, you know. When it comes to fulfilling a re the requirements of a solicitation you may have won, technology is what's going to be able to help you strategize, 
identify specifically the steps of what you're going to do to fulfill that requirement. Everything is going to be documented. The systems that you're going to need, depending on what type of whether you what products or services you're selling, oftentimes are going to require certain types of applications that you'll need to use. And certainly, depending upon the dollar amount of your your contracts, you need to be able to document how you've done everything you've done yes. so that someone like a Luciana Turner Miss Compliance Diva is there to save your butt when they come possibly 10 years after you finish the contract to audit you. So in short, you're saying small businesses aren't paying attention to technology, one, as a revenue source, and two, as a means of performance. So exactly. I think that's very important. Wow. That's a big one for me. I, I, I used to, I was, well, I wasn't joking because it was real, but I used to say it took 20 years for small businesses to get on email. I used to beat up business owners about getting on email. Goodness gracious, please. They were so resistant. It's just as, they're just as resistant today to this whole social media stuff. I'm not, you know, I'm on it, yes, but, but what I do is a necessity, okay? Yes. But I also know that those, when I see companies, corporations, government agencies on social media, I'm knowing that I'm doing the right thing and I'm following them and I'm keeping up with what they're talking about. If I know I'm on LinkedIn and there are groups in there that are from specific agencies and it's that group has something to do with the, the type of business that I have, if it's an open group, I'm signing up to get in so I can see what's going on and what they're talking about and staying abreast of what's happening in that particular agency. I mean, I could go on on that se segment. but Now, I have a question from the audience. Not from a right or wrong perspective, but how important is the election to small businesses and what is the best way for them to prepare for whoever is going to come into the office or the new administration coming in January 18th? So, again, I said do the research, do the homework, get on webinars, get on calls. I was just on a call yesterday. Hillary Clinton was on speaking. Mm -hmm. Someone that I know very well today, uh, Small Biz Chat. Um, she's going to have Hillary Clinton on also. And it was all specific to small business. So under, go in, take a look on her site or on the uh, site that they have for her to find out what her stance is on that. Do the same with the, the other contender, Donald, Donald Trump. you got to find out what their stance is on that. you got to hear what they're saying. Now, I know it's election time. People are going to say things. Whether or not it's going to come to fruition is not just up to them. So it's yeah. going to depend on who else is coming into Congress, hmm. what's going to get, you know, and it's going to take about a, at least a year for them to ramp up, ramp up. And, and, you know, because appointments are going to change. People who have been hmm. appointed in positions, all of that's going to change. So you better keep your eye on who's taking over those positions and going in and taking a look at what has been their position on small business in the past? What laws have they been a part of passing? What bills have they been a part of writing in the past? you got to do your research and your homework on not just who is the, presidents, the presidential candidates, but also on the people that they're going to be appointing in very and key positions. I would also keep an eye out on who the new appointee to the Supreme Court is going to be. Oh. God, yes. There are several items in litigation that's going to end up before the court. I mean, we just all might as well just get used to it. The LG, I'm, I know I'm saying this wrong, the LGBT, you got it. I, 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 you got it. I, it's part of it. And then there's the whole thing of whistleblowers. And I know you're like, well, why do I care about this? Well, your labor policy should incorporate or reflect the current rules and regulations and contracts. So you yes. cannot have a labor policy that is the complete opposite of FAR. There's this whole thing going on about salaried versus hourly and 
if there's something going on with that, I need to jump back on Let that. Let me just say this. The most important thing is, and this is one of the notes that I took, when you're, if you haven't already done this because you're already in, this, in, in the arena or if you're just coming into this arena, just take a look at FAR 19, the FAR regulations, Federal Acquisition Re Regulations 19, which is all about small business. Now, there are others because I always say you need to understand the various different contracting vehicles too, so make sure you're looking at that. But there's a lot that you should look at in FAR, but start out with the small business so you understand the different programs and what it's all about. So you can see whether or not there's a fit for you anywhere in there. Now, I want to just back up a little bit and say this. This is not for the faint of heart. When I talk about grit, man, this is so not for the faint of heart. And if you have not done any business with anybody, this is not for you. If you've never had a contract with anyone and you're just starting your business, government is not the place I would suggest you begin, whether it be state, local, county, municipal, because they've got their own stuff going on. And remember, government is politics. Hmm. People, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Yes, we have processes that we go through. Um, I just read something, I think I posted it the other day, about the sole sources, one of the government agencies. Yeah, the moving sole sources and they're, changing. They're, but, but here in this particular case, the concern was they kept going back to the same companies over and over and over. Yeah. So some new regulations are being are in place, but they're still not that as specific as they could be in order to reduce the likelihood of that because the contracting officer is the one that signs off on that. Now it's going to be someone that's above the contracting officer that ah. will have to sign off on their, their write-up of why they went back to the same company. Yeah. And I'll tell you what I find funny about that. Government contractors have always had to justify sole sourcing. I mean, it had to be justified three ways on Sunday. You had to have a high up executive sign off. That's always been for the contractors. So I think it's funny that all these years later, now the government is following a rule they've already set out for somebody else. Yeah, they had to take it to another level because apparently, and I, I, I would have to look for the article, um, that particular department, there was an issue. So, I, and, and even when we talk about sole source, something you all should know, sole source, which usually in the past, there were sole source contracts. Everybody wanted to be 8A because of the sole source. And there was also sole source for HubZone. And yeah. there's... Now the new sole source for women-owned small business, which is inclusive of economic disadvantaged women-owned small business. But there's also now sole source for small business. And who did I leave out? SDVOSB? SDVOSB, small disadvantaged veteran-owned small business. It's across the board, people. Sole source is now across the board. And there was also mention made at a, at a conference that I went to down in D.C. Um, in June that the goals, the goaling, mm -hmm. is now not just going to be on contracts here in the United States, but also uh, international. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. So it's something for, this is research. This is doing the research. All the larger companies, the top ten running around here now, the GDs, the Lockheed, they're now starting to take small businesses seriously, seriously. competitors. Because I know for a fact, General Dynamics lost a contract they've had for 30 years to a small business. And then they tried to pout and say, since we developed the technology, we want to keep, they got to come up with their own technology and they want to keep their technology. So it's not, I want people, if small businesses need to realize that one, okay, one, people are realizing that small businesses is a viable option, but it isn't, like she said, it's not for the faint of heart, it's not for those who, who easily give up. There are some days you may have to go in the bathroom, in the closet, and, and <laughs> but you got to come out that closet and get it done. Resilience, come right back. I people want to cry to me, I'm not the one. 
22nd pity party. Get over it. Let's Matter of fact, that they 20 seconds too long. Let me tell you, it was so bad, one lady said to me, but Miss Burroughs, now it'll be Dr. Burroughs, thank you. Mm. you. You need to be more empathetic. And I said, baby, this is not for the faint of heart. There's no empathy in this. You mess up with a contract for the federal government. There's no empathy. You are not getting another contract. It's not happening. It doesn't matter what agency it is because they can all have access to see what your ratings were and how you did on that contract. And if you messed up and forget about being defaulted, you're out. So what what is this empathy stuff? This is all that's emotionalism. We need to just quell the emotion, okay? Yes. Set it aside. There's a, there's a place for emotionalism and contracting, and that's your health and wellness program where you institute it, um exercise programs and go talk to somebody. <laughs> But it's not in that room where you're writing the RFP. It doesn't and belong. it's not when you're talking to a contracting officer or their cotars or their project. If you get the chance to get in front of a project manager, or if you're speaking to your first point of contact, that small business rep or that Osdebu person, it is not going to happen there. People are not. We are. This is business. This is business sure. at a level like you probably have never dealt with before, especially for the small minority women veteran business owners. That's our marketplace. That's my marketplace. That's what I'm de I've been dealing with for more than 30 years, getting them through the process, helping them through. I mean, I, you name it, I've done it. I've been a really large transportation project for our public agencies and have literally had to sh teach people how to write a letter to go after uh, a change order. The regulation, the, 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 the solicitation, the RFP tells you the process and everything, but you need to be reading this stuff. You need to read, read, read. There is no getting away from it unless you have other staff that sit there and read all of this documentation, unless you have an attorney like some that I've been listening to on webinars with WIP, that they're professionals in government contracting. This now, I wanted is all to they do. I have another question from the audience, but before I read that question, I want to tag on to this attorney thing. If you're going to, all businesses have to have some type of legal counsel. However, recognize that a general practitioner oh. is not the best person to go to for a government contracting issue because they don't know the law. Once again, I don't go to my dentist when I have a migraine. <laughs> I don't. If I have appendicitis, I don't go to the podiatrist. I go to the specialist that can cure that problem. Now, and you know what? That goes across the board. You know, I've had a lot of people come to me to talk about, you know, um, so for instance, with the, with the, you know, just the basics, the basics of registrations and and bonding and uh, uh, the certificate, diversity certifications, you know, the different, you know, 8A hubs, all those that I mentioned previously, and all of the other certs too, because they'll get them confused. They'll be like, I want to be an MBE, but the, the federal government doesn't have an MBE program. Yeah. No, but so and so told me I could be an MBE. No. There is no MBE certi cert certification nor set aside program or program of any kind with the government. Or they're coming to me, I want to be a WBE. No, you mean a WOSB or an EDWOSB. No, I want to be a w Women Business Enterprise. No, that's a different certification for a different marketplace. You need to know, and I talk about this in depth, you need to know what your industry, your targeted market in that industry is looking for. What programs do they support? And just because those those designations are there and they have those programs doesn't necessarily mean that they're always going to have a need for you. So you don't go out to meet with people talking about I'm certified as such and such and such. Because they don't care. That doesn't matter. Can you do the work? Do you have the structure in place in your business? Are you capable? Do you have the capacity? Can you meet the requirements on time, within the budget, do what you said you would do, the way you said you would do it, there in you know. response to that solicitation? That's what they want to know. Now, at the end of the conversation, it's the, oh, by the way. Because I know for I was getting a lot of calls coming in on why am I being told they're not taking 8A. 
So I questioned the SBA about this years ago and got one answer. But then I just started talking to my friends that are small business representatives or ISABU, Office of Small Business that, um, Disadvantage Utilization. Did I get that right? Office. Yeah, I, O S D B U. <laughs> <laughs> ah, anyway, acronyms make you nuts. Um, and here's the thing, and I think this was talked about last week. I'm not sure, but if they've already made their goals for the year in a certain area, they're going to look to make their goal. They're looking to the areas where they're not making their goals. And that's what they're going to be focusing on. So if they've already fulfilled 8A goals for the year, but they're low in their WSB or their SDVOSB or hub zone, that's, those are the companies that, companies that have been certified in those areas of what they're going to be looking for. So don't get bent out of shape. Who else can you do business with? The other thing is not putting all your eggs in one basket and think, oh, I'm, I'm going to get rich working with the feds. I have two more questions for you once you finish answering the phone. <laughs> Actually, so this going to have diversity in your, in your basket of, you know, that basket of eggs. You want diversity because look at what happened when the government shut down. Everybody went running scared. And I'm going to go here. Montgomery County, Maryland, when the government shut down, they took a huge hit financially. And they sat back and said, and I attended one of their meetings, and they sat back and said that too much of their revenue was dependent upon government spending. So they were trying to come up with ways to, one, build small businesses so that they did not focus purely on government contracts. Because when the government shut down and the contracts shut down, businesses in Montgomery County, most of them are federal they're federal contracts. Yes. So you're talking about laying off left and right, and then let's forget about the layoff, why well, we don't want to forget about the layoff. But in addition to the layoffs, they closed offices, which left retail yes. space open which affected the janitorial companies who were only getting these contracts with these big so we have to diversification it is key. It is and critical to, to to diversify. And and you and know how the, it, you, know, the, the, you know, we know when they was threatening to close the government, everybody should have gotten to a strike session. What do we really? do in the uh Yes. And so now is the time to do that too. You need we Look, you mentioned earlier what, how is it going to impact um, small business when the new administration comes in. You're going to be severely impacted. You really need to stay on top of what's taking place. Join organizations that will um, um, advocate on your behalf. Join organizations that advocate on your behalf. I can't say that enough. And be active with them. And make sure that you're staying on top of what's going on. When they have a meeting, if it's a webinar, if it's a phone call, if it's a Zoom meeting, whatever it is, do what you need to do to get on. You know what? Sometimes you can't because it's during the time of day you're busy. Guess what I do? I register anyway so that I can get the recording. Hello, did you think about that? Register anyway so you can get the recording. Because it's understandable if you've got meetings going on or you're traveling or whatever. Um, it is going to be a massive, a major, I believe, a major impact. This one in particular. Yeah. In now, particular. The go jump to the audience question. They want to um, explain continuing resolutions and how that will, can affect the award contracts. I don't really get that involved in that aspect of it, so I'm going to let you take the lead on that. Oh, wow. Because I get people to the point of going after and getting the contracts. So we get you from A to Z, from I need to get going with making sure I have all my tools, skills, strategies, um, I understand my terminology, technology, back office, and so forth. But when it comes to once you've got that contract and you start dealing with it from there, then I lead you to other folks. I, I think the biggest, I'm doing a little bit of research on this for my September 30th FY17 budget review. 
But the biggest concern is funding. Um, because you can be awarded a contract and they're not funded for six, seven months. And that has happened. I've had clients that have seen, have have even said, "Oh man, no, what you know that is, you know." They said they 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 do some work, and then there's nothing. That and then they get tax order to do something else, and then there's nothing. Nothing. And, and so, be careful of these IDIQs that they're throwing out here because those are specifically designed to just put you on the hook. So that they can then turn around and say, oh, we don't have to work for you. We just want to help you later. I mean, that's I'm but being a little bit no. That's indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. Yes. And, and you know, they can be, now, IDIQ can be huge. One task order on IDIQ can be $100 million. But what they fail to tell you, or what, you know, it's not even their job to tell you. What people fail to research and understand is, you are one of however many Ugh. businesses that have been awarded, awarded, mm -hmm. thank you, who have been awarded, and then you might, you and someone else might be chosen or not. So I, I'm not sure if that really directs an answer to the question. But if they're talking but about continuing resolutions from one administration into the next administration. Well, you know, we haven't had a budget pass, a real budget. That, that's what I was going to say. That gets to be a budget issue, and it really becomes a challenge um, when you're changing administrations. Things get put on hold until everybody is in place, until they've figured out, you know, they have you know, the, you got the transition team, and it's like, what are the priorities? And remember, another thing that, that businesses, you know, really Actually, have to pay attention to. somebody who gave us the answer to that question. Okay. Go ahead and finish that. So another thing that they need to pay attention to is what's going on uh, in the world that impacts us directly because the priorities change based upon that. And so, therefore, budgets can be a certain part of the budget that you, that was signed for you that had the contract may be put on hold, and they're diverting those funds to something else that's critical and taking place right now. So those are things that we have to look at and consider. But what's the answer that they gave us? Go there ahead. has to be an understanding of what has been spent during the fiscal year, the maximum that the agencies are allowed to spend until that continuing resolution has been released. So it's somewhat, um, um, to kind of... I, I get it the now. ...language, it's the, until they sit down and decide that they're going to do the next, the release the next batch, you have right. to understand they only have $200, and if you're at $195.97, <laughs> don't go spend $50, because you're going to have to wait until that next release before you can get that difference. So I've experienced that. Now I know exactly where you're coming from. I've experienced that when I used to work for these uh, at Rutgers for the Small Business Development Centers as their director of procurement. We, you know, there would be that gap in time where you're waiting for the um, grant to be approved, and then when it is approved, because we had to, you know, write up the whole proposal and everything. Now, grant gets approved, but there was a gap between the approval and when the monies were actually released. And just like you said, you want to talk about things getting tight and squeezing because you, you know, and spending having to really be curtailed. Well, it's already tight, but now you got to curtail even further and make sure that you are able to cover until the next release of the funding for the following um, year and talking about that, let's not forget we're coming up on the last month of the last quarter of the fiscal year for the feds. Oh yes. This is such a critical time for people to go after you know, help help this is your chance to help these agencies, these departments to spend up their budget. Yeah, there's quite a few 
RFPs that have hit the street in the last couple of weeks. And that's, you know, people, you know, the government, you're penalized for not spending all your money. Yeah, you won't get so, that. They, they will reduce that budget for the following year. So, so uh, that's, you have to really keep an eye out on what's going on. But I want to do one more thing. I'll have one more question. And then if you can just give us a 15-second wrap-up after, after answering the question. <clears throat> Everybody is so addicted to certifications. Oh. They sell, and I'm, I'm not being facetious, but I want to be serious about this. <laughs> and I use the term addiction because that's the way they act. They act like a somebody who's waiting for that next fix, and my next fix is their certification because it's going to solve all of my problems. It's as if they don't know how to do business without it. Like, I can't get any, you know, I've had people say to me, they said I had to be certified. I'm like, oh, my God. Look at all the companies that are out here doing business and they're making tons of money and they're doing really well and they're not certified at all. But that means you don't know how to do your business development. That means you don't have a program in place, a practice in place, a SOPs in place for what are the things you're going to do for business development. Um, yeah, that's a good way of putting an addiction, like freaking out if they don't get it. Okay, yes. There are set-asides, yes. That means if you don't have that, you won't have that opportunity, perhaps, to, to um, participate on that particular opportunity. But who's to say you were going to get that opportunity anyway? Who's to say you were going to win anybody? Do you know who your competition is? Have you studied them? Have you seen who's getting the contracts? What I said before about research, I got people who tell me they research. But when I go into FPDS or FBO or um, the, go take a look through the reverse auctions, <clears throat> they don't even see what I'm seeing. They've never seen it. I said, I thought you did the research. Because they're not being creative and thinking outside of the box and how to look for the opportunities or look at what was already done or even go look for the forecasts. And then some just look at it from a, a, a very flat perspective, not three-dimensional. And if you don't see immediately what you think it should look like, you're giving up on it. And You've got to open up the mind and be willing to see beyond, I don't even know how to say this, but you've got to look further. I do that. I don't know why. It's just something I've been able to, um, I guess because I've been doing this for so long, so I know I'm like thinking, oh, wait, let's look over here, or oh, let's check out this next code, or let's check out this PSC code and see what's coming up under that, you know. But I've just given you three places to look, four places where one should be looking to see what's out there, what's coming down the pike, and what already transpired. So you have an idea of what they're looking for. But right now, who's on the phone calling the small business reps, the Osdaboos, to find out, um, to, to talk about what they have, what they're doing, what they're selling, who has been keeping up with them all along, building a relationship with them, and finding out, do they, you know, I know people who have been able to go in with something that they're selling, uh, and they've been able to walk out with contracts. They might be small, but so what? You're getting in. You're in the door. You got something coming to you. So what are you all doing? I, I think I sent out an e-blast today just ask, you know, asking some questions. You know, when's the last time you talked to an Ostabu representative? When's the last time you talked to – when's the last matchmaker or industry day that you – which one was the last one you went to? How long ago was that? Because you, <laughs> when's the last time you sent an email to someone, keeping them abreast of what you're doing or letting them know what you have or if it's a new product or a new whatever, not new in terms of new to the industry, but you're now in possession of being able to sell this thing or the services. Finding out what their needs are, most important. What are they looking for? What are the challenges that they're having and what do they need right now? And you have the solution for it. But this is the time. I mean, people they they make their writing they're writing POs or whatever right up till what is it? Uh, 11:59 and 11:59 seconds of September 30th. Hello? PM that is. So what are you doing to get in? Forget about this whole I mean, I don't want to say forget about it. The certs do have a great deal of merit and there are wonderful programs and they've allowed for 91.7 billion dollars in contracts in 2014 to go to small business. 
but it's not the only way. So certification should be seen as a part of the strategy and not the strategy. It's one strategy. Where, it is a strategy. That's so one. It could be the sole strategy. But no. And especially now, oh, yeah, let's talk about mentoring programs, the, 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 the mentor protege program, oh, which yeah, is now not just for AA. Are you kidding me? It's been now my thing with mentor protege is this. You still need to be educated and informed. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is the big guys pushed for that inclusion. Mm. Because of the small business set aside that they want access to. And I'm not I'm not trying to cast the big guys as villains. But you have to realize when they go into their room and they create their strategy, there's a mentor's protege strategy. Oh, yes. And in that strategy is how many A-Days and how many small businesses now. Now, here's this other merger and acquisition group over here who's going through the mentor protege group saying, wow, this is a great A-Day company. How do you think Lockheed Martin just bought that A-Day company they just bought? <laughs> To the mental protege program. Yes. And if that is your end strategy, now some people, I know a man, I met him, awesome, awesome person. He's on company number four. His strategy is to start a company, build it up, get a certain platform, and then sell it. It's worked for him. His last company that he sold, he sold for what, $12, 15000000 million? Oh, yes. <laughs> and that's a great strategy. So but I also that, know a company that found a strategy, and I had a chance to uh, introduce him as one of the speakers at an event that I moderate in the Alliance Mid Atlantic. And oh. he found a strategy wherein he could look into companies, big companies, to see the piece of work that they do. They have several things they do, but this one piece in particular, you could see that they're missing that, they're lacking that, and that was that hole that he was able to fill and come in to, to work with them through that. Now, he's, he's growing so big so fast that you know they're looking at him, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to buy him. But no, he's not going that way. But then there are other people. Other, I do know that he has bought and sold, um, but he has also bought other companies. This Which is, is a, 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 an African-American male. He has, he's just blowing up. I'm so impressed with the things that he's able to do. Bottom line is there are a number of different strategies. you got to get out there and start going to events that other federal contractors are going to to learn from them. Listen, just listen. Stand in the midst of the conversation, the circle, and don't say a word. Just listen. Listen to those that have much more experience and hear what they're saying and hear the stories they're telling and hear the strategies that they're talking about and take some notes to see what's going to fit for you. But again, if you are a startup, this is not for you. You are not, you have no past performance. That is critical. I don't care what level of the government you're going to. They want to. They're going to want to see past performance. doesn't have to be government past performance. It needs to be past performance with somebody. It could be B2B, B2C, you know, corporate, whatever. But that was similar work to the work that you're going, you want to go after with the government. That, I, you know, because I have a lot of people, oh, and please, please, please pick a marketplace and be really specific about it. Don't. I just had someone tell me recently, I said, so after five times asking, who is your target in the feds within government? Like, tell me what department. Now let's drill down even further. And then we can find out whether or not they buy what you sell. They said, right now, this is a sign of desperation. I'm just taking anything that comes in. Well, first of all, it's not just going to come in to you. You got to go seek it out. But anything, no. That means you're desperate. That means you don't have a strategy. You have no strategies whatsoever in place. You have no standard operating procedures in place. You're just hungry. You're, you're starving right now, and you're just ready to grab hold of anything. You'll probably fail in the in the uh, uh, being able to fulfill all of the requirements because you don't have a strategy. So 
be specific. If you say, I'm going after Navy, but Navy is huge. And there's so many different components in there. So try to narrow it down. Not try, do it. So you can be really specific. And now you know their language. Now you're reading up on their piece that's in the web and understanding exactly what it is they are looking for. And you can speak their language. It's the difference between defense and the, and the civilian agencies. Understand the difference in the language between the two of them. And someone tell me, you've got generals that are contracting officers. You just can't speak to them any old way. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And they don't like flowery language. You want to get on a contract. If you want to sit in front of a one-star general and just keep using these, your thesaurus, you might as well. <laughs> I think we talked about that once. Yes. It doesn't work for them. If they're very military, and then we're going to have to do a wrap-up. But when you're talking about you, it goes back to something Sheila said last week. You have to know the language of the exactly. people you're talking to, and you need to talk their language. And if you don't know their language, well, you better get Rosetta Stone and learn. Yeah, and that's what I mean. And, and again, going around, being around them where they are when they're out, and just yeah. listen. Looking at their websites and seeing what they're saying on there. How is it, ter what is the terminology used in there? And just listen. If they have, you know, one of the things, that some sites will do this. I know, like, SBA has a YouTube. Go on there to their site and listen to what they're saying. Um, this, you know what, the information is surrounding us. It's everywhere. But we have to be willing to step out of our um, little silo and get in somebody else's silo and start learning from them. And I know now more than ever, I'm beginning to really start looking in different places to see what people are sharing and how they're doing what they're doing. And one of the things is just to ensure that I'm on track. I can tell you right now, when I walked out of Amex Open at the end of June, I was on track. What I'm saying, when I work with my clients, I was on track because the people that are out there making goo gobs of money in federal government contract were saying the exact same thing. I said, I just wanted to make sure I'm up to date. I'm keeping up to date. Any new things going on? But I'm saying the right things. I had conversations with some folks one on one just to see what I could glean from that and to share where I was at and what I was doing. And I walked away feeling like I'm coming to my, when I'm speaking, if I'm speaking or training or working one on one with a client, I got it right. Stay so we current. want to work. So we want to work in your silo, in the the boot camp that you have out. How can we get more information on that? Oh, great question. So I do have a free webinar, but for those of you who want to go straight to the point, I'll tell you that too. The free webinar is called the Big Contract Blueprint. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, just go to www. Big Contract Blueprint Blueprint Webinars dot com www.bigcontractblueprintwebinars.com or if you just want to go right to the meat of things you can go to bigcontractbootcamp.com www.bigcontractbootcamp.com and you get to hear to learn about the 24 modules that I have and all of them fall under purpose planning process preparation paperwork and promotion and that's where I find myself I did that because I got I, like I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over so let me do it Digitally, you get to work on it on your time at your time at your pace. Um, I give you I give you work to do, and if you do that work, everything that I'm giving you to do are things that you will be plugging right into your business plan. Wow. Well, okay. You will plug this information in some way, shape, or form. And if they want to just get in touch with me, they can reach me through my website, www.stephaniespeaking.com, or hit me up on email at navigator at stephaniespeaking.com. Well, I dropped the Big Contract Blueprint webinars and the Big Contract Bootcamp website into the Contracting Chatter group, so they can just jump in there and click on those sites for you. And I will include a link to your discovery session, which is on the website. They can just click and schedule that session to work with the navigator. 
Yeah, I mean, I do give away a free, you know, 20-minute um, connection meeting so that I get to know what the person is looking for and I get to tell them what I'm doing and see whether or not the two shall meet. So that <laughs> there's no cost for that. And actually, we ended up going to 30 minutes, but we don't go past that because anything past that you have to pay for. I'm just telling you. <laughs> just saying. Okay. Um, so but that's a part of that grit factor. Oh. Just expect somebody to say, ah, okay, now we're in paid territory. Yeah. Oh, well, and I can check. go no further, and I will give you the PayPal link, and you can make the payment, and then we can continue the discussion. So you got to know what your business is about. you got to know who you are and whose you are and not be afraid to put it out there. I'm, I'm telling you, you got to just put yourself out there. You have to promote you, and in doing so, you promote your business. But you standing in, stand back in that office, uh, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Get on a train. I've been back and forth on the train the last three years. I have, I have stock in Amtrak right now because <laughs> I, don't, I don't drive out of state, so that's my choice. So, yeah, I'm on the train. Train is Uber. Uber, rather, not Uber. Uber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you need to well, I want to thank you, Dr. Burroughs, for taking time out of your schedule to speak with us on this evening because that grit factor is very important and government contracting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. The light in me bows to and honors the light in you. Namaste. Namaste. And I have a scheduled change for our next contract for September 14th. We're still going to talk on proposal development. However, I guess I have told me that they had a scheduling conflict. So we're oh. going to go into the procurement process and how and what you should look for in the RFP. And I'll actually walk through an RFP that evening. So yes. if you have one you're looking for, hint, hint, there's an opportunity to get your RFP reviewed by the experts. <laughs> so definitely want to do that. That's so important. I mean, you know, I've had people come to me and say, can you help me with this? Well, one of the things I found, and I just want to tell people before they get on that, that particular one, make sure you've read that thing cover to cover, word for word, three times. That you have skip. Will you say print it? Yeah. Print. Don't be afraid to pick the 100 plus whatever pages that it is because you want to be able to highlight that stuff so you know where your questions are. But I guarantee you for most of the time the answers are, are there. The answers are there. But what I'm finding happening is when people come to me and they say, I, can, I don't know how, I don't know what, can you, I, I just go to two or three different locations, go right to the table of contents, look, boom, here it is. Here's the response to that question you have. That's because I've been doing it enough, long enough. But you guys have to start reading these things or have a team of people working on a particular piece. I hope I can't wait for your proposal development one to come up. Because sometimes you're responding to a requirement, but sometimes you're actually developing the proposal. Yes. Or, and even when you're dis responding to the requirement, there's a specific way in which to do that. So I can't wait for you to go into that one because, ooh, or the person who's going to speak goes into that. It's deep. Yes, it is. It's deep. And I know I'm going to learn something from that because I've been through training once before, twice before, and my head was spinning <laughs> <laughs> like the exorcist. <laughs> so on that note, <laughs> <laughs> like, what you say? But say, guess what? But I didn't have to let it keep spinning because the person that was teaching was also the person you would go to for the help when it was time for you to do yours. So, hello, go to the experts. That's the truth. And on that, I want to say good evening to everyone, and I hope you found value in the information that was imparted. The recording will be made available just as soon as I can get it converted and uploaded into the Facebook group. And it'll stay in the group until Friday. I say 5 o'clock, but it's usually around midnight when I take it down. So on that, and if I can't post the actual video, I'll just post the link to the YouTube channel it can be found on. Awesome. So once, so once again, thank you, Dr. Burroughs, and thank you, audience, for turning in tonight, tuning in tonight for the contracting chatter.
And everybody, thank Luciana Turner for bringing this to us and making it um, available uh, because this is awesome. Thank you. Good night. Good night.